Welcome again to the Oracle Data Guard course. So far in this course, we have learned about how to create a physical standby database. We have also learned that a physical standby database can be used for read-only operations. And that is best used for 1. DR solutions 2. Offloading long query operations from the primary database 3. Offloading the backup and four for testing purposes. We also learned how to create a logical standby database. We learned that a logical standby database can be opened for read-write operations, and it is best used for one, PI solutions, two, performing database rolling up, and three, as a staging database to propagate the changes made on the primary database. In this lecture, I will explain about using the DataGuard broker in managing a DataGuard environment. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to do the following. Understand the broker capabilities, benefits, and limitations. Describe the DataGuard broker components. Understand the DataGuard broker configuration files. Use the DGMGRL command line interface, understand the broker properties, perform the procedure to configure the data guard broker. Because this lecture is a merge of the broker concepts and the practical side of using it, it's gonna be a long one. For that, I will divide it into parts. So, what is the data guard broker in first place? Well, the data guard broker can be described as the management framework for the data guard. Oracle data guard broker makes your life easy in managing your data guard environment, much easier than managing it using SQL plus. Data guard is already part of the Oracle database enterprise edition. You don't have to install anything to start using it. When you configure it, you should not use SQL Plus for managing the data guard. Databases involved in a broker configuration are called members. So when we say data guard broker members, we mean by that the databases involved in your configuration. When you use the Oracle Data Guard Broker to manage your data guard environment, you will be able to use the broker to perform the following. Change the transport method from sync to async or vice versa. Start or stop the apply process. Perform role transitions, which are switch over and failover. Change the protection mode of your data guard configuration. You also can monitor the health of the entire data guard configuration. If you want to implement the automatic failover feature, which is called fast start failover, the broker is a must. You cannot do it without using the broker. If you want to use Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control to manage your Oracle Data Guard configuration, again, the broker is a must. You must configure the broker before you would be able to manage your Data Guard using the Oracle Enterprise Manager. When you use the Data Guard broker to make a change in your Data Guard configuration, you connect to one database in your data guard configuration. Issue the command to make the change and the broker will propagate the change to all the databases in your configuration. This central management capability is an example of how the broker makes it easy for you to make a change in your data guard configuration. Another very useful benefit of using the data guard broker is that it protects you from falling into what is called split brain condition. But what is split brain condition first place? I will explain the split brain condition now. Suppose you have two databases in your data guard configuration that are managed by SQL plus. One runs as primary database and the other runs as a physical standby database. At some point of time, some issue raised in the primary database that took it down. You, as a DBA, responded by failing over to the standby database. Therefore, the standby database becomes the primary database and the new application sessions will connect to it. 
Suppose later the old primary database started up again. If your configuration was not well set to handle such a situation, there is a risk that the new application sessions will connect to the old primary database, and you end up with a situation where some sessions are connected to the new primary database and some are connected to the old primary database. You can imagine how bad would that be, can't you? This situation is unofficially described by some DBAs as split brain condition and definitely you should do anything to avoid it. Luckily, when you use the broker, it will easily protect you from slipping into this problem. Because simply, if you fail over to a standby database, you will not be able to start up the old primary database for read-write operations by normal client connections. The broker will disallow it, even if you try it. In conclusion, DataGuard Broker provides you a robust shield that protects you from falling into split brain condition. DataGuard Broker has its own command line utility called DGMGRL. You will learn about the broker commands that you can issue in this command prompt. As you learn about them, it will become clear for you that the broker commands are easier to remember than SQL statements that you would use to manage your data guard configuration. Once you enable the broker, it takes control of the values of the log archive destination parameters that are used to configure your data guard, which means you as a DBA do not change manually the values of these parameters. The broker will take care of that. Actually, when you issue a command in the broker to modify your data guard configuration, in the background, it changes the attributes of these parameters. So using the broker, you don't have to worry about manually modifying the values of the so many attributes of the log archive destination parameters. The data guard broker has been evolving since Oracle 9i and it is definitely a mature and reliable interface for managing Oracle DataGuard. In conclusion, personally, I would highly recommend using the broker for any DataGuard configuration you set up. Something important you should know about the broker. If the broker is configured for your DataGuard configuration, you cannot use SQL Plus to change anything in your DataGuard configuration. You should always use the broker to change anything in your data guard configuration, like changing the transport method, protection mode, or performing switch over. However, you can still use the SQL Plus to monitor your configuration or obtain information about it. You also have the option to disable the broker configuration and return back to using SQL Plus for managing your data guard configuration. Actually, in some special cases, you will need to do that. DataGuard Broker has typically the following components. Some new background processes that run in the memory of all the DataGuard configuration databases. Usually you don't have to worry about them, and actually you don't have any control on them. A very important component in the DataGuard is the configuration files. You will configure those files in every database in your DataGuard configuration. They are multiplexed which means you will have two copies of them in each database. The broker uses the configuration files to store all of the data guard configuration details in these two binary files. For example, the broker saves in those files information like what databases make up the configuration, how to connect to each one, and what parameters to set up when each database starts up. Configuration files can be saved in a file system or in an ASM disk group. They are totally managed by the broker and you as a DBA should not manipulate them by any other means. To interact with the broker, you use a command line interface called DGMGRL. We will talk about this command line interface in more details in an incoming slide. As we discussed in the previous slide, the configuration files are maintained at each database in your data guard configuration. Two copies are maintained in each database. You use the parameters dg broker config file to define their locations. 
By default, the configuration files are saved in the Oracle Home DBS directory. You always have to create the directories where you want to save the configuration files before you set the values of those parameters. Their names are of the format DRN followed by DB unique name dot dat. The configuration files are maintained by a master process called DMON, which runs in the primary database. All the broker actions are coordinated by this process. DGMGRL is the command line interface to interact with the data guard broker. You don't need to install anything to use it. It is just gets installed with the Oracle database software. You don't have to run it on the same platform as the database because it can use the Oracle net to connect to the Oracle database. You have the following options to start the DGMGRL. DGMGRL followed by slash which is used to connect directly to the local database using the OS authentication without using the Oracle net. You are advised not to use this method though. The second option is to use the format DGMGRL followed by the sys slash password. Similar to SQL plus, when you use this option, you connect directly to the local database defined by the variable Oracle SID using username password credential. Again, because this method doesn't use Oracle net, it is recommended to avoid it. Another option is dgmgrl sys slash password at tnsnames.ora descriptor. With this option, you use the username password credential to connect to the database using Oracle Net. This is the recommended option that you are advised to use to connect to the database using dgmgrl. You can also connect to the database from within the dgmgrl command prompt. For that, you use the connect command, as shown in the slide. Again, even with this command, it is recommended to use the Oracle net to connect to the database, which means connect to the database using a descriptor defined in the tnsnames.ora file. We will use the DGMGRL utility in many occasions along the entire course. DGMGRL commands can be divided into four groups. Connection and help, creation and editing, monitoring, and role transitions. Under connection and help, we have the commands connect, help, and exit. Under creation and editing group, we have create, add, enable, edit, and, co and convert. Monitoring group has a single command that is show command. In role transitions group, we have switch over, failover, and reinstate. Broker properties control the way your data guard configuration operates. They can be displayed using the show command and changed using the edit command. Broker properties can be divided into three scopes or levels, configuration, database, and instance. Configuration level properties control some setting that affects the entire data guard configuration, which means it affects all the databases in your configuration. Database level properties have their control on a specific database. Instance level properties have their effect on a specific instance, which is applicable in Oracle Rack database. The slide shows to you examples of using edit command to modify some properties in the broker. As you can see, the format of using the command is edit configuration set property followed by the property name equal to the value. Broker properties can be divided into five categories. They are broker specific properties, database parameters, attributes of log archive destination, SQL syntax, and logical standby procedure arguments. Broker specific properties control the way the broker operates. Database parameter properties actually control specific database parameters. 
database parameter properties actually control specific database parameters. When you make changes on those properties in the broker, the broker in the background actually modifies the values of some database parameters. Those database parameters are owned by the broker, which means even if you as a DBA manually change them via SQL plus utility, the broker will reset them back to their original values that are saved in its configuration files. We will learn about those parameters soon in this lecture. Attributes of log archive destination properties control the settings for the redo transport for each database in your configuration. This means when you make changes on those properties in the broker, the broker will actually change the value of the log archive destination parameter in the database. With those properties, you control attributes like sync, sync, net timeout, reopen, and so on. By a SQL property, we mean that this property changes the way the broker starts up the apply services for a physical standby database. At the moment, only one property falls into this category. That is apply parallel. This property controls the way the media recovery process or MRP uses parallel apply processes. As their category name implies, Logical standby procedure argument properties control the way the SQL apply operates. They are applicable only in logical standby databases. In the incoming slides, we will discuss in more details about the most important broker properties that you may need to consider in most real-life scenarios. Properties that are related to fast start failover will be discussed in the fast start failover lecture. Although we will discuss about a long list of properties in the lecture, but practically you only need to use a few of them in your daily management of the data card.